Please give a warm welcome to Justin Mencher from Incuvest. Can I just direct your attention over here to this lovely view? And uh, all funded by AdWords, your, your AdWords budget. I always wondered where that money went. <laughs> so I'm from Incubest. We're, again, a, a TIS incubator. We operate under the TIS scheme here for Singapore-based uh, companies and founders. Uh, we invest up to $589,000 Sing dollars of our own money, uh, although we have gone up to over $2 million in uh, selected deals, which are syndicated. Um, Incubest was started by Ronnie Wee and, and Natasha Fung, um, both uh, Singapore um, uh, stalwarts, shall I say. Uh, Ronnie had a, a very successful software business in um, uh, some years ago, and he's gone on to uh, run several funds in uh, Singapore. Natasha was also with the EDB, uh, e Economic Development Board here in Singapore, and has gone on to start an airline and worked in the fashion industry, amongst other things. I think probably the biggest, uh, maybe I would say, uh, differentiator that we have is that we're a little bit more entrepreneurial. Uh, I better not, I better not uh, uh, say that word. Uh, we're, we're a bit more hands-on, let me put it that way. Um, we've had a huge amount of experience. And to, to, to give you that idea, I'm going to be a little bit uh, rude and, and, and list off the activities that I've done in my life, because I was asked to give a personal um, uh, a speech. And so some of the things I've done, uh, starting at age 15, um, I started out doing yard work. I've done house painting, clam bakes. I was a production engineer for a number of years. I did house removals. We had a house removals business. I was a high value ju uh, jewelry courier. Uh, I've done corporate ventures uh, for uh, BT and uh, 3M, some uh, large uh, companies, uh, looking at uh, uh, what to do with old telephone boxes. Uh, I've done waste management uh, work. I've done venture, co uh, venture consulting with uh, medical devices and uh, bicycles, a women's magazine, mat maternity bra company. Um, and I've been a co-producer on a horror film. Uh, so probably a little bit more variety than is uh, healthy, um, but, but definitely not of the, of the finance background, um, which uh, is why you know, I always make the mistake with the numbers. Um, no, that's not true. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd, I'd mention a couple of things that I learned in my uh, experience and really what brought me here today uh, kind of on the other side. I still, as, I, as um, Derek mentioned, think of myself as an entrepreneur. And we approach investing as entrepreneurs. Um, so we don't have necessarily the same mindset as, as some of our colleagues. And um, that's not a better thing. It's just different. Uh, so what I often tell people that we reject is that you're not right for us, you may be right for other people. And that's one thing that I've learned as an investor and as an entrepreneur, which is that you must segment your investors in the same way that you must uh, segment your customers. Because not everything's going to uh, fit uh, everyone. Uh, so uh, early on, I remember uh, one of the first businesses that I ever did was, was yard work. I was raking leaves. I started up a business with a friend of mine. And uh, I distinctly remember standing there raking leaves while he smoked a cigarette behind a tree. And uh, the lesson that I learned from that was be careful when you hire your friends. Now, um, I did most of the work on that job, and that business didn't last for very long. But I started a house painting business not long after that. And in a, a, a moment of, 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 of hurry to finish a job, I brought on another of my friends who was going OK until he knocked over a full pot of paint all over the lawn of our uh, customer. And if you've ever tried to clean fresh paint off a grass lawn, um, let me tell you, it's, 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 it's bad. So uh, that is sort of a long way of saying, uh, you know, be careful who you hire and who you do business with. Um, you should have a professional relationship before you have a friendly relationship. Um, one of the other things I learned in the house painting business when I was a kid um, was to uh, uh, take very good care of customer service. I remember one day coming into a job and the lady looked over um, out of the window. She said, there's paint on the porch. That's what I thought she said. And uh, I said, yes, yes, we painted it yesterday. And she said, no, no, the Porsche. And what had happened was that as we sprayed the house, 
uh, the wind had blown this fine mist of paint all over her brand new Porsche uh, 911. So I was about 17 years old, and I was literally, um, well, not quite literally, but uh, I, was, I was a little bit upset with that. Uh, so suffice to say that we, we cleaned up the car. It wasn't too badly damaged. and. Uh, uh, I sent her some flowers, and she was one of our best references for at least a year after that. Uh, so how you recover is, is, is almost as important as not screwing up in the first place. Uh, other little lessons that I learned, uh, when I was a jewelry courier, I was taking large, uh, high-value am amounts of, of jewelry uh, from uh, San Diego, California to, for example, the appliance king of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, fascinating stuff. But watching how much they spent, we're talking uh, probably $100,000 to $200,000. And I was a young kid then. So that seemed like a lot of money. Not so much anymore. Uh, and I just noticed how the jewelry, custom jewelry, turned from metal into uh, a piece of value. And the uh, care that went into wrapping the gift and presenting it and sending me as a courier over to uh, present it to the, to the new owner so he could give it to his, his wife. And it was just phenomenal to see the increase in value and the attention to customers that, uh, that we saw there. So that was a very early stage. It was a little scary going through uh, security with these, you know, sole responsibility of a, of a very large uh, South Sea pearl necklace, uh, but uh, it arrived safely. I worked as a production engineer. Uh, tell me how I'm doing here on time. Close to. Close to. Okay. Uh, so, so last one is uh, I worked at a, at a corporate uh, environment as a production engineer for a number of years, and I realized how uh, incompetence can thrive in in large organizations. And uh, when we're talking about a startup that's thinking of a strategy, it's um, it, it's important to remember how. Um, s how st solid and, and how difficult to move large companies can find uh, your competitive space. So uh, I guess I've got a few more, but uh, I think I'm running out of time. Large organizations very different. Um, I think know your customers. Uh, that's something that we would reject someone out of hand for. Uh, I, I get constantly frustrated with the lack of knowledge of customers that, that our um, the people who are proposing businesses come to. Um, be persistent, because uh, starting a business is a very hard and, and difficult road. Uh, you've got to keep going till, till you get there. Uh, and communicate. That's the, the most important thing that people uh, forget, especially in technology. Um, I hope that's given you a little bit of a personal uh, glimpse. Uh, as I said, Incuvest, uh, we've got a website, incuvestasia.com. We've got a lot of stuff on there, including an application form. And you can send us all, a, all your stuff there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin.